Hello, friends. This is your friend, Kent C. Dodds, and I'm joined by my friend, Laurie Barth. How are you, Laurie? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I'm super excited to chat with you today. Um, and uh, yeah, before we get into our conversation, uh, I'd love it if our audience could get to know you a little bit. So could you introduce yourself to us? Tell us some things about yourself, whether it's you know um, technically related or not. Um, we'd just love to get to know you a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm Lori. I'm a software engineer for a company called 10 Miles Square. I live in the DC area. Um, and I do kind of a lot of random things on the side and a bit as part of my role. I do some blocking, some technical speaking. I'm an egghead instructor. I'm a girls who code facilitator. Um, and I love interacting with the community and kind of learning new things and sharing resources with other people. And I love being on the receiving end of that. Um, <laughs> so that's that's awesome. So can you tell us a couple of the things that you've done? On, Egghead is, of course, something that's like in, big and important to me. It's been my thing for a long time. I've been um, teaching on there. So I'm, I'm curious, what are um, some of the things that you've been teaching on Egghead? And what are some of the things that you hope to teach in the future? Yeah. So um, I've done a bunch of really short, like I know Egghead is always about being short and concise, but really <laughs> short uh, JavaScript syntax, um, especially basically everything ES 2015 and beyond all of these new things that we've added to the language that should really be tools under people's belts to write more readable, um, concise, verbose, like both of those things at the same time. It's crazy. <laughs> um, JavaScript. Uh, we, I love JavaScript, but Realistically, we kind of get a bad reputation um, for many years. It, it wasn't the most readable language. It was kind of this um, hacky shoehorned language that would appear in random HTML files. So um, I love the fact that that we're changing that and that it's evolving. Um, and so a lot of my instruction videos are on that. Um, and uh, eventually I will get around to it, but I really want to do a course on view router. Um, mm -hmm. routers in frameworks are really amazing and powerful. Um, and I introduced view router to, um, someone I was working with like a month ago and they were amazed by how well it's built, um, and how much you can do with it. So I think it's, it's one of those things that can be really accessible for people. Um, and I'd love to do an intro to that. So hopefully I'll get to that soon. Cool. Yeah. It's always fun. Uh, the, the uh, Christmas time uh, at Egghead mm -hmm. is always very fun and exciting. Lots of new courses coming out. So maybe we can expect to see something from you then, hopefully. hopefully. Uh, I know that <laughs> we're all very busy. So uh, <laughs> take your time. But um, that's excellent. So um, I wanted to talk with you, Lori, because it seems like you have your hand in a lot of different things that you're just, uh, well, uh, your intro uh, kind of said it all, where you are involved in so many different things. And I'm just curious, what is it that motivates you to uh, be so involved like you are? That's funny because that's like a really nice way of saying that I'm random and aimless. Um, uh, <laughs> but that's not which, what I mean at all. No, so. oh, I know. It's what I mean. Um, <laughs> I, I'm really bad at saying no, realistically. Um, and so I see things that other people are doing and I'm like, oh, that seems fun. I want to try that. Um, and so I, I – try my hand in a lot of different things and then I get pulled into them and then forevermore I'm doing those things. Um, <laughs> I told myself I wasn't going to, you know, do egghead. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing talks and I'm doing blogs. That's enough. Yeah. Well, here I am. Um, <laughs> I told myself I wasn't going to join a new committee and now I'm doing the TC 39 educators committee. So wow, I, that's I, awesome. yeah, I'm excited about it. I haven't, I don't think I've posted that publicly. I only joined like last week. Um, that's super exciting though. Yeah, but it's so I just I love doing a variety of things. My company has been really amazing about supporting me and the kind of community efforts I want to be a part of. Um, and I have the flexibility in my life to do that now. So um, I yeah, and and the other thing I'll say is um, I think it's really important that we have a lot of different voices Um within the community, especially on the teaching front, um, but on sharing their knowledge and sharing their resources. Um, you talk about this a lot, but the idea that everyone learns differently and everyone kind of absorbs information differently. And there are resources that I've seen that completely don't click with me. And there's resources mm -hmm. that right away feel like they were written by me. 
Um, mm-hmm. And so I just like to add kind of another voice in the crowd, even if I've seen the topic explained a million different times, maybe the way I explain it will help someone else because it's how I understood it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, from the sound of it, you it it sounds like you're saying that you're maybe doing too much. In <laughs> retrospect, would uh, would you change uh, what you've done, and and what could you advise the people who are listening um, who maybe they aren't involved in a lot, or maybe they're in, involved in a ton, or they have some opportunities? Um, what are some of the things that people should think about when they start getting involved in something new? Yeah. Um, do as I say, not as I do. Right. Um, <laughs> so, so too much is really interesting because sometimes that's true. And sometimes that's not as an industry and just the way content creation works, things really ebb and flow. And so there will be mm. weeks where I'm totally slammed and I'm traveling to three different places and I've got two posts that have to go up and a bunch of, um, meetings to be in. And then there will be weeks where I look around and I'm twiddling my thumbs and saying, wait, what am I supposed to do with my life now? Mm -hmm. Um, But prioritization is, it's important and it looks different for everybody. Uh, It, for me, it's a matter of, is the thing that I'm working on something that I want to be putting my time towards? Mm -hmm. And admittedly, when someone asks me to do something, I feel a little bit more peer pressured. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and I'm not necessarily as as great at intrinsically saying, okay, is this something that I want to do? Um, but at the same time, I'm relatively early on in community involvement and content creation, probably only a, a year, maybe a couple years. So trying my hat at a lot of different things um, and and we'll see where it shakes out. Um, again, I, I have the flexibility to do it now. So it's a, it's a nice opportunity to kind of test the waters and, and see where I'm most excited to contribute my time. Mm. And where has that been like so far in, in your experience um, as like, <clears throat> like balancing um, your work um, responsibilities as well as um, the, the things that you've taken on as, as additional responsibilities? Where have you found yourself to be um, the most happy and rewarded um, and like um, and found yourself to be the most motivated? So it's funny because I always say that when I'm in one realm, I'm the most, you know, satisfied. And then when I'm in the other, I'm like, why aren't I doing this all the time? So I I blog a lot and I'm involved in Twitter and that community. um, And I really enjoy being there. I love sharing content. I love when I help people understand something. And then I go to a conference and I'm hanging out with, you know, a bunch of other people in person and uh, a bunch of other speakers. And I'm like, I want to do this all the time. So it's hard because I, I enjoy both aspects of the, of the communities. And I think they're very different in some ways. Um, so for me, it's as, as long as I'm getting that feedback loop and, and people are saying, Hey, what you're doing is helping me or that resonated with me, or that was helpful in some way. I'm happy if I'm, you know, talking into the abyss, then maybe less so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think, um, like you said, you're kind of testing the waters and, and finding that, um, that thing that makes you uh, the most satisfied. Um, it's a kind of a never ending search um, uh, for that kind of thing. And, and uh, um, but testing out new things is kind of how you how you go about doing that. So um, what are some of the, the types of Uh, things that people can do like so I I think kind of what we want to uh, you know circle around here in in our conversation is to talk about the importance of trying new things and getting outside of your comfort zone Uh, what are some of the um, the benefits that you've found um, in in your life as far as like uh, trying these new things and getting outside of your comfort zone a little bit yeah um Perspective. Um, you you really understand what it is to start from nothing, um, and and there's there's good and bad aspects to that, right? So so if you start doing something completely out of your comfort zone, you have a kind of new new respect and perspective on what it's like to start out without that foundation. We get so comfortable so quickly with all of these pieces of knowledge that we take for granted, whether that's, you know, you're a software engineer and you know how to set up your computer and use Git. Okay. A lot of people don't know that, but it's second nature to you now, 
or you work with cloud services and you understand the definition of what an EC2 is. Okay, a lot of people don't know that. Um, I'm raising my hand. People can't see it. <laughs> yeah, me. they should have named it VM on AWS, oh, virtual okay, machine on AWS. Know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so it's all of these things. It, in my mind, I talk about this a lot with vocabulary and just the fact that you don't understand what people are talking about. But it's just as true um, when you kind of step into those practitioner shoes and you're actually trying to implement something. The the other side of that is. It's really dangerous to try too many things at once and get Mm. just enough understanding and then jump to something else. You will Mm. be endlessly frustrated. Um, I joke all the time. I'm a consultant, right? So I joke all the time that I don't have a tech stack. My tech stack is whatever the clients tell me it is. Mm. And there was a period probably a year ago where I looked at my boss and I said, I have jumped from hardware to software to cloud to CMS and back again in the course of the past few months. And I need a rock to grab onto, right? Mm. I'm, I'm in quicksand and it's, I feel dumb all the time. And we joke that as software engineers, we have to get used to feeling dumb. And that's, mm-hmm. that's absolutely true. But it's also this idea that you need to get comfortable with something and build on top of that knowledge. You need to use the thing that you learned for a period of time instead of just constantly be flailing about. So jumping Mm -hmm. into other things, starting with no foundation, super important, but also recognize that once you've built that new foundation, you should try and use it for a while. Mm, Okay, so it's it's more of a balance. So there are a couple of things that you um, said there that I kind of want to unpack a little bit. So the... um, yeah, so like part of the the benefit of um, jumping into something new is developing this, um, a, a, at least a reminder for yourself that the things that you're familiar with are easy to you because they're familiar, not because they're easy necessarily. And so um, would you say that you're kind of like part of the objective here is that you're intentionally... Uh, kind of causing yourself some uh, growing pains or some learning pains um, so that you can develop that empathy? Or is there a little bit more to it? I think it's absolutely intentional to to develop that empathy. I also think that you can sit down and try and be conscious of what the building blocks of your expertise are and the, the knowledge that you take for granted. And you're still going to be at step one instead of step zero. You Mm. have to go to step zero somewhere else in order to really appreciate just how low that bar needs to be. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I I wonder if that, um, like, it, it, uh, even if I were to go and say, hey, I want to try a new programming language or I want to try backend or I want to try cloud services or something, I, I'm actually still not at step zero for somebody who doesn't know how to program. Um, mm-hmm. And so I wonder if you could get the same kinds of benefits by trying something completely different, uh, like maybe people management or music or yeah. you know, just anything else. Do you have any thoughts around that? No, that's absolutely the case. And I think um, the benefit maybe of doing something else in the programming space is that you're going to realize that you have certain skills that transferred over. And then maybe you'll recognize that those skills exist in a lot of different places and are a barrier to entry. But I think that's absolutely true for for learning anything. Um, you know, a lot of educators, I'm sure yourself included, talk about the idea that you want to learn how to learn. Um, mm-hmm. And that looks different for everybody, right? We don't all learn the same way. We don't all um, take on information in the same way. So understanding how you learn anything is always going to help you bring that back to what you practice. Um, And it's going to help you recognize that the way you learn is maybe something you want to introduce to your area of expertise. So someone who learns like you do could follow that path into what you've learned. I'm using the word learn a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's interesting. So um, 
like we've talked a little bit of like kind of a meta discussion around learning something new and um what we've talked about actually kind of seems like um side benefits or auxiliary benefits to learning something new there's also like the thing that you're learning could benefit your life as well mm-hmm. um like i don't i don't know how uh to write a uh, go server uh, and if i go and learn that then yeah i'll learn um, how to learn but also know now how to write a go server which could be useful for me um do you have any thoughts around that and like the the benefits of making yourself i i'm because i'm like way deep into javascript and um like I, I do lots of Node and lots of React, uh, and I don't really branch out very far beyond that. Uh, and so what benefits are there for somebody like me who's so like single-minded? Um, would there be to, to branch out and learn new things? So I suspect that your definition of Node and React is a lot larger than a lot of people's would be. Um, Obviously, you run a podcast, so there's some kind of automation that you've figured out to get this working and running and deploying to the various podcast services. I'm sure because you run your own um, testing library that you've figured out a whole bunch of stuff about the way open source works. Uh, mm-hmm. There's there's a number of things around that where you've really expanded your reach and you probably don't think of those things as things to learn. Um, Mm -hmm. Anyone who does any, I mean, you have your own website, so you do some kind of CICD deployment. Like there's all of these different things. And what we forget is even if someone knows React really, really well, if they've been sitting in a larger development team and someone gives them a ticket, they implement it, they push it to Git, and that's all they know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you do that they have absolutely no experience with. And so we branch out into these separate areas and you do it naturally just because there's things you want to accomplish. And you may not recognize that you're doing it. But for everyone else, if you're on a larger team that shields you from some of that stuff, it can be nice to kind of dip your toes in some of the other areas. Maybe other team members are working on something. Um, You want a better understanding of the DevOps pipeline. You want to understand the requirements writing process better. All of those things are beneficial, especially because you're eventually going to move to a different team and you have no idea how your role is going to grow. And having some experience with those things instead of just being a cog in a wheel, um, kind of I guess lifting your head up and looking around at the bigger picture and what other things are contributing to your success um, is where you're fi- you'll find areas that you probably want to dig a little deeper in. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's um, those are some nice words. I, I know more than I think I do. So <laughs> I, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, and that's probably true of most everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, they they know more than, and and that's actually kind of the point of what you're saying here is that you know more than you think you do. And that's why maybe people struggle with it because they're like, well, what's Git? Like, what does commit mean? Mm-hmm. And I already committed it. Why do I need to push it? Like, you know, um, lots of things we take for granted. Um, this conversation actually makes me think of a blog post I ju- wrote just yesterday called How to Get Experience as a Software Engineer. I read it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and by exposing yourself to new things, uh, you're experiencing new problems. And those problems may actually be applicable to whatever it is that you're doing in your your full time job. So uh, even though I've made the decision that hey I'm going to stay like laser focused on this JavaScript open source, you know, just a, a couple of things here, um, that doesn't mean that by learning other things uh, that's a waste of time. Like you definitely have opportunities or or the the things that you learn in those other. Uh, with those other experiences can cross apply. Is that has that been your experience? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I have worked in a staggering number of um, different tools, different frameworks, different languages. There was a month last year that I was simultaneously working in Python, Java, JavaScript, and PHP. Whoa. Um, <laughs> what about syntax, like, yeah, oh, I'm running oh, JavaScript yeah. and Java, and like, yeah. I'm Let sure me that. tell you, there's something going through TC39 right now that uses the um, hashtag symbol 
for mm. actual code. And I'm like, no, my my syntax switching brain can't handle that. I'm going to be commenting these private variables. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's I've kind of lost the plot here. There was a point. What, what was your question? Again? Uh, I, I was just asking if, if uh, learning new things can, uh, gives you skills that are cross applicable yeah, to the yeah. thing that you're really focused on. So you don't recognize how kind of cross-functional things are until they start breaking. Um, you'll When you start seeing failure, failure, you will recognize how failures often follow the same patterns. Um, again, as a consultant, one of the things that we do is we go out to companies and we do assessments. Um, and we joke a little bit that it's company therapy because you sit around the table with a bunch of really high level people whose teams interact, but they may not necessarily interact. Mm. And you watch them kind of suss out problems and talk through their process. And you recognize really quickly that these higher level issues, um, these things that are causing problems day to day, they're often not technical. They're often people and communication and process. And I think one of the things your article really nailed is if you start to see a lot of different problems and solve them, you're going to see the same patterns, not just for fixing them, but for getting to the bottom of what the problem is, mm, figuring out root cause. Yeah, figuring out root cause is really important. And um, I think a lot of times we, we suspect that the problems that we're seeing are one off. Um, but in my very first development job, there was a senior engineer who I walked over with a problem and he's like, oh, you solve it like this. I'm like, you know everything. He's like, no, but I've seen that problem a hundred mm -hmm. times before and mm -hmm. you're going to see it a hundred times too. Yeah, I, I, I really think that that exposure to new problems um, is like a critical piece to developing experience. So that's that's awesome. Um, cool. So. Let's say I'm I'm an engineer. I'm steeped in um, in JavaScript, or I'm I'm like way deep into backend services programming. Mm -hmm. How do I decide what's the the new thing that I'm going to try? Yeah, this is the you know million dollar question, right? I actually um, people who follow me on Twitter may notice that I tend to ask questions of the Twitterverse a lot just because mm -hmm. I want to know people's opinions or um, insight on things. And I asked this question a long time ago. I said, Why, how do you decide what to learn? Um, and I got a lot of really interesting answers. Um, and the thing that really stuck out to me was a number of people don't get to make that choice for themselves. Mm. Uh, if you have free time and you get to make that choice, that's great. If you have a side project or... Um, a side hustle, as it were, or anything else. But a lot of times it's asked of you. Um, you're picking up for someone who's left the team. Uh, you there's, there's something new being added to your product and they need someone to own it. Oftentimes it's thrust upon you. And I would say those are situations where learn what you got to learn um, and, and do it to the best of your ability. I would also say if you see a need on your team for something and you find it interesting, maybe volunteer. Um, mm. Oftentimes, at least in my experience, there will be opportunities right in front of you. Um, someone's overloaded and they need a secondary. Those are great opportunities because you have a senior resource to kind of pull information out of and knowledge out of. I can't understate the importance of that. Um, and other times it's, there's just kind of this glaring hole that no one's handling. Um, it's interesting because I think you will listen to a lot of particularly underrepresented people who talk about taking on those tasks and being the glue in teams and maybe not getting the recognition they deserve. So mm. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that, um, there's, there's kind of nuances to that, but in terms of mm -hmm. technical needs that need to be met, um, Highly recommend. Yeah, that's actually, that's very interesting. I definitely remember um, on one of my product teams, um, I, uh, there, like, I always volunteered for the UI React stuff or the tooling upgrades or whatever. Um, I, I never really was super interested in, in doing our node um, server stuff. Um, and I, 
and or or like doing CI um, fixes, <laughs> whatever. Because servers are evil, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was Jenkins, so. Oh, I, see, I, I don't mind Jenkins. I'm the only one in the world, <laughs> but. <laughs> well, there you go. So, um, I, I I do think that it, it would have been beneficial, and and um, one of the things that I'm kind of taking away from this is that it actually doesn't matter quite so much what it is you do next just that you're doing something different mm -hmm. um and and um and you get the benefit of uh stepping into um an unfamiliar situation uh so you can de develop some empathy for people who step into unfamiliar situations uh, and then also the the things that you learn in that uncomfortable unfamiliar situation uh can often cross apply to the things that you do on a regular day to day absolutely and uh when you're when you're jumping around and, and learning different things, that's great. If you stay in one place, you're probably going to learn something new either way. Um, but don't be afraid that you're going to like get super rusty. Mm. Yeah, if you don't do something for five years, it's going to be like riding a, a bike, but it's going to have evolved. So the bike is now a tricycle and figure out how to ride that. Um, With rocket boosters. Right, exactly. But if you step away from something or even, you know, put it as 50% of your time instead of 100% of your time, oftentimes in teams, um, in development, they're working with the same version of something for a long period of time and putting in additional features. So it's not like you're you're missing major opportunities. You are just expanding your opportunity to learn while on that team. And I know a lot of people mm -hmm. feel like they kind of hit plateaus in companies mm -hmm. and they'll they'll make jumps because of that. Um, I never have that issue. I have, you know, a different client every week. Um, <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> but it's a thing. And and there are ways if you like your team and you like your company to to seek out other other opportunities to kind of move away from what it was that you were feeling stuck in. Mm, yeah. And many companies uh, have like, unless you're a four person startup or something, uh, you typically in that scenario, you're going to be doing a lot of things. Um, but right. uh, in, in most companies, uh, mature companies, you're going to have a lot of different um, areas where you can uh, contribute and, and kind of change what you're doing. Um, there was one company that I was working at. There was a sort of smaller company and uh, before I jumped in as the UI engineer, uh, they had uh, they they'd lost an, um, a UI engineer, and so they had one of their back end engineers doing some UI work. And um, I hope he doesn't listen to this, but <laughs> he'll agree with me anyway <laughs> that uh, he he had a really terrible attitude um, about that experience. And um, I mean, I'm not saying that you have to enjoy uh, these new things like. We, we kind of naturally gravitate to certain things sometimes, and that's fine. Um, but you're going to have a much better experience in learning these new things if you have a positive attitude about that. And I tell my kids that all the time, like, um, that uh, you just like you can um, you're going to go through the experience one way or the other um, now that you've committed to it, I guess. Um, and so you may as well have a positive attitude about that um, so that you can get the most out of it. Um, so that was just one other thing that I, I thought of. Is there anything else as we kind of wrap things up that you'd like to uh, talk about, Laurie? I mean, it's it's interesting what you just said. I would say if someone's going to be a grouch about something, maybe don't volunteer. Um, if you get it thrust <laughs> upon you, though, it's it can sometimes be hard to have a positive attitude because you don't feel like it was a choice that you got to make for yourself. But um, mm. I've talked to a number of people who have who have gotten responsibilities thrust onto them and even if simultaneously you're looking for a new job because you're so unhappy, um, I guarantee you there is something about that experience that will make you more valuable to your next employer. And if you can mm. think about it that way, um, you're normally a little less resentful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. And and it is fair, to, uh, or I'm glad that you brought that up too. Like sometimes it's just a terrible job uh, that you don't want to do. And <laughs> Really, uh, it, it's easy for me to s stand here and say have a positive attitude about it, but sometimes it's just really hard. Um, and so um, I, I guess it, it, do the best that you can <laughs> to have a, a positive attitude because typically uh, you're you're going to be happier with positive attitude anyway, and everybody wants to be happy. So uh, trying to see the the best out of it and and taking the opportunity to to learn something uh, can maybe make that a little easier. 
And if all else fails, have a slice of cake. That's what I always say. Do ya. Do ya. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, Lori, it's been a wonderful uh, time chatting with you. Is there anything else uh, that you'd like to, to mention before we wrap things up? Um, answer my questions when you see them on Twitter. I've been using the hashtag Curious Lori. I like hearing what people have to say. And sometimes Twitter can be a lot of people asking to be listened to. So this is your opportunity to be heard. Cool. Yeah, nice. Um, and Lori, what's uh, your Twitter? Well, well, we'll put your Twitter handle in the um, in the show notes so people don't have to like remember. Yeah. I'm Lori on tech, but if you don't Lori know how to tech. spell my version of Lori, it'll be in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so for just to wrap things up with our call to action for people today, um, try to do something outside of your comfort zone and use that experience to help you empathize uh, to learn how to empathize with those who are unfamiliar with the things that you already know already. Uh, you already know already. <laughs> hey, that's, uh, that's how it sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, and, and not only that, but you'll, you'll gain a lot of um, cross applicable knowledge as well, which I, I think is a wonderful thing, even if it's not a like software related thing. Um, I, I've been impressed how many software engineers are into music. Um, and so there's got to be something there. Uh, so if you're not a musician, give music a try and maybe you'll you'll learn something about uh, programming there. <laughs> I recommend baking. Mm, baking. Um, that's my wife has really been getting into that recently. And uh, I can't cook, and, so I need to be able to do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and and when you're baking, you're not the only one benefiting from that experience either. Yeah, that's part of the problem. I can only bake when I have people to pawn it off on. Otherwise, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, too much stuff. Too uh, much. Yep. Yeah. Well, cool. Laurie, it was, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you for joining me, my friend. And uh, we'll uh, chat with everybody next time. Yeah. Thanks for having me.